don't underestimate the power of ego thinking and how much it wants to be at the effect of things outside of itself. It wants that to be true. And so it and it will convince you that it is. It's very, very cunning. And it will convince you that stuff is happening to you you didn't ask for. And for as long as you're convinced of that, you have no power to change what's happening around you. The Holy Spirit works with you on the level of cause, not effect. So if your thinking is causing a certain thing to show up in your life, it could be an illness, a relationship issue, money issues, whatever it is, the, the Holy Spirit can't come in and change the effect of your cause. It doesn't have the power to do that and wouldn't do it if it could, because then it would be to disempower you or say you're not powerful enough to cause your own effect cause what you want or to have a miracle or transform your world because the only one that can do that is you you can do it in conjunction in communion with the holy spirit through the holy spirit's guidance but you're the one doing it and you're doing it in your mind all miracles start in the mind as the mind changes and that's the area where the holy spirit can work with you in the thoughts in your mind as the holy spirit helps you heal your mind and the thoughts in your mind, the beliefs, the interpretations, the judgments, all that stuff, then your causability naturally will cause something different to show up around you in the what seems to be the outside world. According to the Course, we are created whole and complete. God generated us by extending God's self to become us. There really is no birth. There's only a continuation of God. You are a continuation. As such, you're whole and complete creator, and you create in truth as God creates by extending yourself. You can take that mechanism, that causability, that mechanism, the ability to cause or create, and you can use it to minimize yourself by making things that aren't true. And so everything that's happening around us at this level is not true. None of it. None of it. Not this table, not the chair, not these pillows, not this plant, not the computer, not your body, not your happiness, not your sadness, not your pain and suffering, not your illness, not your any of it, none of it. It can seem very real to us because that's the power of our mind to create an illusory world that seems very real. But everything in this world we are generating through our mind and our ability to believe what's not true. We are cause, we're not affecting you, causing on levels you're not, most of the time you're not conscious of. And so it behooves you to do the work to go in and ask, how am I causing this? What is mine? And really that all that is, is what are the thoughts in my mind that are generating this? You know, this is happening, especially when there's repetition, when there's a situation that keeps showing up over and over, different people, whatever it is, but it's the same experience over and over. The only common denominator there is you. And then other people live a life and they don't have that ever happening to them. They've got something else happening, but not what's happening to you because your story is your story. Your stuff is yours. What you've decided about yourself and the world and other people is yours. And it's going to keep showing up the way you decided it would because you're the one causing it to show up. Most of the things we see as bad and wrong and terrible is a part of ourself that is good, that we judge as bad and wrong and terrible, and we project it out there. Most of the things we see out there we think we don't have, we want to go get, are also parts of ourselves we denied or disowned, think we're not that. So we fall in love with it over there. It's like you have a thing for musicians, and you think they're awesome, and you want to be, well, there's a, probably some inner musician in you you've denied and disowned, right? Trying to marry it back by getting it from out there. So it's all in you.